people should hear us. <laughs> okay, I think we are um, live. Yes. Maybe. Hello, hello, guys. Hello. Uh, so today we're here with our awesome developers and community manager and another awesome person, Joket. I hope you heard about him. He's a terrific animator and made a lot of cool videos about Monster Hunter and other games where he talked about their character creation tools. And I definitely recommend to watch them. Yes. And part of uh, today's stream will be an interview. We'll discuss different aspects of work in video game in the video game industry. And another part is our community quest. Well, you will make another choice if you want. You don't have to make a choice if you don't want. And we wanted to catch up you a bit on it, I think. I'm not sure they hear... Uh, Do they? Mm -hmm. uh, Do you guy, hear us? No, I, I, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure that uh, our friends are heard on stream. Please say something. Say hi. <laughs> Joket <laughs> Joke just like I'm oh, living no, this stream. No, 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 no. Just, just. Stealth. Hide. I think you. We. Nah. Uh, Stealth uh, check failed. That's definitely. a net twenty. No, that's a natural. Natural no, twenty. No, that's not. No, I'm sorry. Definitely not. A natural no, twenty. I, no, I don't see him. <laughs> I do. I can see his back. No, that's not a back. I think it's a. Back. That's a short. Yeah, that's a back. Okay, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> we were making a joke. Uh, do, do you hear Joker? Hmm? Yes, we don't hear him. We no, they can't hear you. Wait a second. We are fixing this. Uh, while we're fixing that, we might catch up on the community quest. Maybe. If yes, uh, let's, because, uh, yeah, let's catch up. So we want to talk about our community quest. Previously on our community quest. After a battle with a necromancer, the commander found a sinister-looking stuff, which he decided to keep. The party took refuge in a cave to rest after battle, but in the morning they found Maya, the young cleric, who was beloved by everyone in the party. Wait. Aha! <laughs> the party took refuge in a cave to rest after battle, but in the morning they found Maya, the young cleric, who was beloved by everyone in the party, dead. After examining his companions and considering their possible motives, Commander decided that although Tessera, the elven archer, acted suspiciously, it was not enough to accuse her or anyone else of murder, and the party continued their journey. That's your turn. Okay, 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 I'm continuing this. Uh, guys, bear with uh, our echo, it will be fixed soon. The party soon reached the stone wilds or winds wilds, <laughs> a region in the world wound where once an epic battle between the druids and demons took place, and all trees were turned to a stone by a powerful magic. Ollie, the young recruit, recalled that he visited that forest as a child, and his father was one of the druids who stayed to guard it. When the party was camping after a walking day, they were ambushed by demons and Ali was kidnapped by a group of Nabasu. With the help of uh, Diludar, the only surviving druid, they have managed to rescue Ali, who apparently met a Sibra... Siabra... Siabra... Siabra? <laughs> Someone. <laughs> Siabra, a powerful under druid who Ali thought was his father. Later, the party met that creature again, but it seemed to avoid the fight. They kept going and found a strange glowing man here, which revealed its secret to the commander. Only by waking up the inner power, the one true to his heart can close the world wound. After this, Dildar, the druid, shocked by the commander's willpower, confessed that he was working for demons that ho the whole time, luring people to the man here to drive them mad. Commander ex executed the traitor, and the party fought a horde of demons, but the battle was suddenly ended by the appearance of the Sebrai, who defeated the remaining demon and showed the party away out of the woods. 
Ali, feeling guilty for all the trouble he brought to the party, asked for forgiveness, and the commander decided to give the boy one more chance. <laughs> that was a short one. <laughs> that was okay. a short one, yeah, now, that's cheating. as our heroes have uh, leave the stone whilst behind they suddenly see a ghostly figure. The ghost takes its helmet off and says, Commander, at last! I've been lost in the woods for so long. My order fought bravely, but all my brothers have perished, and only I remain. Ready to follow your orders, sir? Sure. That's your part. The From th that introduction, the commander gathers uh, that they are seeing a ghost of a fallen crusader, who seems to be an avail of his own death, and for some reason incapable of passing into Faraz's realm after his fallen friends. Commander knows a prayer that could end the spirit's torment and free him from this hopeless existence. But also Commander has a necromancer staff, which he believes could give him the control over the dead knight's souls. What will you do? The first choice is to grant a peace to the spirit. The second choice is to send the spirit to the battle. So voting will be on right now, is it on? Uh, I, I, after yes, you uh, announced those options, I just thought that the music from Who Wants to Be a Millionaire <laughs> would really suit this <laughs> moment. I know, <laughs> I know. The, one who, uh, the people who want to be a millionaire would vote uh, the second option, obviously. Oh, sorry, the first, wait, send spirit to battle, to battle, obviously, yes. That's millionaire's stuff to do. The real yeah. question is who's the weakest link? Oh, yes, that's true, <laughs> the awesome. weakest link. So... Now, now we can discuss. Yeah. What we want to discuss? What do you want to do? First, I want to know how everyone's day is going. I always like to ask that. How's everyone's day? <laughs> I'm fine, I would say. Uh, it was a yeah. very difficult, long day, but in general, I would say, yeah, for me, it was fine. Mm. It's it's evening, so perfecto. Yeah, that was a good day with a bit of role playing. For our next pro for our next project, uh -huh. <laughs> but no other information about it. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. And what about you? No, no, Hi. I was. Ah. Uh, oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, well. See, um, I don't want to spoil stuff, but there's a certain feature that I really 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 wanted to sit down in the game uh, and uh it took a lot of uh, uh it took a lot of strength from me and today i finally finished it so yeah that was a good good day hmm. and you joe how was your day my day was weird i got up pretty early today and i uh, just started working on a project and uh but then like you guys were like, hey, that thing today, that, remember that we reminded you and then you said that you would oh, be yeah. ready for it? I'm like, oh, I don't. And, do yeah. So, okay. but here I am, totally unprepared because I've never done this before. But I hope that you guys will help guide me and hold my hand. Oh, really? Because we hope that you would do that. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> That's a really But it's bad. very exciting. I'm very excited. That's a bit of a bad and tasteless joke, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all my jokes are quite tasteless, I would say. <laughs> That's a curse oh. of mine. Um, they will be back in a minute. Sorry. Yeah, there's some uh, issues the with our spot. stream. So. Uh, anyway, some so. Some reason Ty is not moving yet. The yeah. Yep. Um, unfortunately. Ty is frozen. Oh no! Uh, Please don't. Hear me? Oh no! 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 He was just sitting still. That's why we thought as well <laughs> that he was frozen. Frozen. There we go. Let it yep. go. That's all I can say about that. Yep. That's a terrible joke. So, um, I need something. Sorry. It's called mouse. Hmm. <laughs> so we need a cat for it. Um. We, so yeah, uh, shall sh shall we shall we start with um? We what? Some of these these. Uh, I don't know which which one do you think I'm gonna let you pick your host host choice. <laughs> yeah, because I don't I don't know what which roll a dice. I would oh, advise. Roll a... Well, that yeah. would be actually a, a fun option to roll a dice for all okay, those questions, yeah, but it might be a trap because we have one personal question and I'm not sure who <laughs> will 
who would like to we answer? Can, we can avoid that one. We can avoid that one if it's... Uh... I kind of won't mind answering it, but... Uh... <laughs> yeah? I, yeah, I, mean, I think it's uh, it's, I think pretty it's fine. Fun. It's, fine. It's, it's a weird fine question. question. It's uh, weird, but but it's anyway. fine. Okay, let's see. Uh, we'll sign. But I don't think we should start with just <laughs> yeah. this question because it's so personal. Maybe some people in the chat would like okay, to we'll, ask. Okay, we'll it. we'll start with a we'll start with a just a a, a general one. Um, let's see. Who the hell? I, are I you? guess one that. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I, I guess one that w is better suiting to me, maybe not good suiting to y'all's regular audience because they, they already know about Pathfinder, but tell tell me, as someone who is not familiar with Pathfinder, what is <laughs> Wrath of the Righteous, I guess? I know that's a very generic and simple and straightforward question, but, like, I mean, I've tried it out, but, like, say you were trying... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm bad at this. No problem. Hello? You know? Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes. It's okay, okay to answer uh, questions and uh, f uh, trying to formulate them. Really, uh, what is wrath of righteous? You mean in in what sense? I guess. Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, as, you know a, as a game, <laughs> as a model for Pathfinder system, as an idea. Yes. What from these types of? Uh, because I am I am someone who is familiar with some tabletop. But not so much Pathfinder. Uh, it has always been like a sort of intimidating <laughs> system for for me. Um, and it's based off yeah. three point five, so I understand. It's just mm -hmm. sometimes it's just a real mess. There's a lot of stuff going on, and sometimes you really don't know what to, you, you should look up to understand it. And some rules are terrible especially grappling rules that take up around one full or two full pages and you look them up every time you try to grapple a creature. <laughs> There's no option not to uh, look them up. Wait a second. <laughs> I, I still love you it though. There's a lot of options. Uh, it has a lot of interesting and cool concepts for character creation with uh, feats and bloodlines and archetypes, but some rules are old. Oh yeah, that that's actually a good good thing to talk about. I don't know if we wrote it in the in the thing, but like, um, how how do you guys go about which rules that you just like omit when you add into the game? Because obviously some rules don't translate well when you put it in a video game. Like, how do you go about deciding? Like, well, like that's quite hmm. easy actually. First of all, you ask uh, yourself if it is really an essential rule. Like, uh, if it is something that. Is is it essential? I'm sorry uh, to this game. Uh, then you think does it, this let's say translate properly into computer experience? Because obviously there, are, it is quite different experience playing on tabletop or like PC. So uh, whether it translates or not. And then the third is basically does it bring fun? Is is it a fun feature or not? And let's say if it is not fun, it is difficult to implement, it doesn't translate well into computer, and especially when it's non-essential, that then you just like, okay, we probably will skip it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Our game designer. <laughs> one of. Yep. So what you're saying is the question is whether the rule uh, sparks joy. Ah. Exactly. Actually, yeah. <laughs> I think that's what you meant. It's basically yes. Does it spark joy? <laughs> okay. You want you don't want I think to spend a lot of time trying to learn a lot of stuff in the game. You want to experience. No, uh, for some, it's really important. I love to create a ton of characters to try out everything, but for some, it's more important about story and how the game flows. Because, uh, you know, it's like in writing. Sometimes, if someone just stumbles upon a weird sentence and can't understand it, it will really mess their impression and ruin it. The same, I think, is with the games. <laughs> yep. Have y'all ever uh, considered... I mean, probably not. <laughs> but have you ever thought about uh, possibly allowing, like, allowing some sort of option to have those rules for, like, the die-hard... Pathfinder fans who like they're like it must be just like the books. I don't care how unfair it is, how dumb in video games, how much it'll cause me to miss. Have you have you thought like about 
Of you course, know. Uh, one like this. We do have it. Yes, I think the easiest oh, example you do. is oh, the death and resurrection. On a story mode, you don't really die, I think. And on oh, a core, yeah. you just it's rules. Like. I would say swarms. Swarms, yes, another example. They're, they're just a good one. Pain yeah. in this, really. It's just so mm -hmm. here's the funny thing about the uh, actual rules. Uh, the difficulty settings uh, in the game go like this. Uh, Storm mode, which is basically effortless, easy, normal, challenging, hard, Pathfinder core rules. Ah. Yeah. So like each one is like disabling each like a set of rules from the from the core rulebook. Yeah. Some of well, yeah, uh, of course you uh, you can of course. Uh, Toggle individual rules and get your Basic custom own difficulty. custom. Mm -hmm. But the oh. uh, the funny thing is that uh, core core tabletop RPG rules are what comes after hard. I'm actually mm. not sure. I think it was yeah, challenging they after, then. Is they it after hard? Uh, or is no? It? Uh, I think hard is the top difficulty. Yeah, I think it's core and then hard. Uh, we removed unfair. It's, it's basically now yeah, hard. hard is and unfair. the challenging is before the core. Yep. But core okay, is but one of the challenging. most difficult. Yep. So. Well, yep. But it's still like even for instance, uh, so with its swarms, with deaths, uh, there are a little bit differences depending on the difficulty. But we still try to keep more or less the same rules, same for all uh, difficulties because it's kind of still essential for the Pathfinder experience. So if we would be doing a different game, it would be a different set of uh, rules and so on and so forth. But because we're doing a Pathfinder game, we still change the difficulty. We might change sometimes uh, what monsters will use, how smart are they to some degree, uh, this uh, plus minus AC bonuses and so on and so forth. Force, but in the end, it's the main idea behind Pathfinder, main rules behind Pathfinder. Because main experience, main experience, suffering. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you really well, don't know uh, how to sell quite. a game, yeah? yeah. <laughs> well, some people like right. suffering. Uh, but... Tabletop Pathfinder is a role-playing game, and a uh, role-playing game is uh, what you make of it. And a large yes. part of it is a social contract, right? Uh, it's what your uh, dungeon master, well, which rules uh, your dungeon master does or does not implement, uh, where they uh, help you out a bit, where they choose to be cruel. It really depends on, on one hand, what uh, the dungeon master does to the party, and on the other hand, what the party is really to tolerate from uh, the dungeon master. But uh, if you just take the rules as written and put it in the game, uh, it would be an experience of absolutely unforgiving master. Uh, a cruel, unforgiving master who will murder your party if the dice says so. It's not what the tabletop game. Uh, um, but no, no, I'm, I'm talking more about basic, essential, like basic idea behind the rules. Whether you're allowed to die or not to die is less of a main idea behind the rules. But the magic system, how it works, how AC works, how leveling works, all those bits is what makes a uh, mm, mechanic, let's say, part of uh, Pathfinder work. So I'm not talking about the narrative and role play, because that's a different thing. Oh, no, well. I'm not talking about narrative. I'm talking about uh, the fact that um, some of the harshest rules in the book, the rules as written, are still written um, in understanding that there will be living people behind it. There will be living people implementing True. it, and maybe we'll ban these rules. See, the, uh, these rules are supposed to be bent during the play, well, I which think a yes. computer does not normally do. No, yeah, That's with a with why, a live. Uh, but we choose what we add into the computer. That's uh, that's yes. basically that's and where that's we why, that's why DMs. And next time That's I will the, make uh, everyone uh, roll initiative reading. to talk uh, each after another, so you won't have to sorry. interrupt. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Just so everyone have a, a time to say something, because Joquette obviously wanted to say something, but you are... You're discussing a golden rule, basically now. Oh no, I'm just some random guy on the internet, and what I say, uh, what I have oh, to no, say is oh, important. No, oh, you're no. the you're the people oh, come oh, on. making we love this cool you. thing. We love you. You're not just a random guy what on the internet. Everyone? 
Oh, there was a. We love you. I really liked your crab guides. Oh, thank you. What, what head do you want? Random. That. This one. This one. Oh. Random. Okay, I'm sorry. Um. I want to say what's happening. Oh, just like yeah, please explain what's happening. I, I can't <laughs> explain. I, I I have a stuff to do. I also can't explain. Nice I, I have to put a hat on. Uh, yeah, we have <laughs> a system that uh, allows our stream to, oh my God, say hydrated, to do stuff to us while we are. <laughs> while we're streaming, basically, yeah, yes. Streaming. So it was hats off to you. We have to change a hat. It was hydrate, so we have Two to times, drink. Two times, actually. Cheers. Cheers. And then there was a posture check as well. So it's a difficult, it's a rough life to be a game <laughs> developer streaming. It's a rough life. Yeah, we're bad. <laughs> anyway, we were discussing so golden that? rule. So oh yeah, master, yeah, that, ma ma that master <laughs> should intervene in some rules and change them, that everyone at the table have fun, even if mm -hmm. they want to follow the rules by the, by the book. Yeah, something the flexibility of having like a real life person running the game, whereas yep. with a computer, it's like way more complicated to try and do that <laughs> like in real time and you've got to do develop so many systems for it oh yeah uh, so you just yes. have it you can adjust it as a player and I, I like that amount of control i think that's great for for the people who are like who are like ah, i just kind of want to play without these things that annoy me you know it's like house rules uh, you know every tabletop's got house rules yeah yeah Both exactly um but there's another thing in computer games that you can do. You can save, actually. You have mm. a, an option to make a mistake that something bad will happen to you, and you can go back and uh, make a different choice or maybe a different decision, and you can experiment different paths. While in most tabletop RPGs with a live DM, you have only one way to do things. You basically make a choice and you live with it. In game, you that can is, return it. That that brings up actually a question that I had. Uh, that now that you yeah. mentioned that, are you guys uh, doing anything to possibly uh, take into account saves coming, or you're just like, no, they can try as many times as they want? Well, basically, yes and no. But main our main idea is that we don't account for saves coming. So if the player mm -hmm. wants to save scum. It's their decision. So c because it is very difficult to some, no, well, you have to build the system around avoiding safe scumming if you want to avoid them. But if you want a player to allow to safe scum, then basically you have to live with that. And I would mm -hmm. say that at least from the game mechanics part, what about narrative part? Well, uh, first of all, we have the thing called uh, the last Atlanti mode which is uh, yeah. essentially uh, means um, that you have one safe game and, and uh, you cannot go back. But it's, it is optional. It is optional. And, uh, well, you see, um, there is an aspect to a game, uh, an aspect to a genre, and uh, I think that uh, it would be wrong to punish players for trying to do things their way if they want to save scum. This has been a staple of the genre for uh, for decades. Uh, I don't think it would be right to try and forbid players from doing that. Yeah, another okay. part to this... Um, oh, sorry. That would just push us into uh, some uh, different genre. Yeah. Which is not what we do. What I wanted to say is basically also sometimes when you develop a new feature to the game and sometimes you just like find out, okay, this will uh, incentivize safes coming, but the feature is nice. So we just decide, okay, like that's uh, what pl player can choose. They can choose to save scum, but fine. Right. You're leaving it up to their choice and yep. the players who believe in their own choices and playing it like a proper tabletop, uh, they they can always just not do it, yep. I guess. Yep. That's a player agency. They should player have agency, a choice. Yeah. There's the nothing bad. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I just want to say that uh, as a person who plays on high difficulties and love a challenge, I can't play without saves. Because sometimes you stumble across a really difficult boss fight and you just die. 
and you're like suddenly mm. yeah suddenly you're just like what did i do uh, what have i done wrong how can i improve my chances to win this encounter and you try different uh buffs uh look uh, how, what stats does the boss have what bonuses uh, what resistances and you build your strategy around that and that's uh, for me it's a really fun part for others <laughs> the, it's just uh, <laughs> others might turn story mode and it will be fine because they want to learn how the things unfold and that's also a great option even if they also have to load the game once or twice yeah okay let's be honest here sometimes <clears throat> sometimes you read the combat look and see that the thing that you did wrong is uh rolled too low mm. <laughs> you just were not lucky oh yeah that's, that's a part that of uh, the game <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I wasn't like... You failed a save in throw and it all went downhill from that part. Mm -hmm. Just one save in throw and... Yeah, it's all just like a butterfly effect because of like one little thing that happened. Exactly. Yeah. And then fall, and then everything falls down like domino. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like, mm -hmm. I like me a good Dark Souls where I just like, I just got to live with my choices. But like, uh, yeah, it is nice. Sometimes I don't want a Dark Souls. <laughs> Sometimes I just want to relax and... I, I you know, really, win. About Dark Souls, I really like how they uh, hide the save mechanic in checkpoints, mm -hmm. so you don't feel like this is a save. It's, yeah, but it's I think it's like safe. I think it's like every time you kill anything or open a menu, it's very very frequent. Yep. Uh, so uh, this was discussion about player. Okay, I wanted this. to say something about mm -hmm. coming and. Uh, Narrative design because it's uh, like it's a different uh, it's a whole huge different uh, problem. Oh, and yeah, you see, um, as a narrative designer, I of course want people to see the stuff that I've written, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, at the same time, I want them to have some coherent experience. I want them to um, play and see their own story, and. Um, if saving is uh, impossible, if uh, you play in only in a uh, linear mode, uh, then, well, to see another thing, to see another option, you will have to play the whole game uh, from the start, and not everybody is going to do that. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, on the other hand, um, there is a um, there is a certain. There's a certain appeal in the uh, what I for myself call uh, a three-dimensional reading, when you not only check out the thing that you actually do, but also check out the things that you do not uh, end up doing in your playthrough, but you still check them out. You yeah. see the wrong answers, you, you see the evil answers, uh, you oh. see what could have been, and you still do not make it canon for your specific game, but you do check them out. You being the mean, being mean to NPCs is always the toughest thing for me. Like that, I, I will never. I'll always look up like, like a playthrough on YouTube of like, oh, what happens when they pick like the evil option? <laughs> oh. Exactly. But what I'm saying is that uh, checking out that option that you do not take uh, uh, still becomes a part of your uh, experience and a part of your story that you didn't choose. Yeah, you want to give players that option to, to be able to go back quickly and just like see in case they want to know yeah. the outcome of the choices, I guess. Mm -hmm. And again, that uh, that is just a part of the genre of Mm-hmm. It always has been. Uh, yeah, true. Uh, and actually about choices, I think there's another question, but more personal, uh, that is also related to choices, is um, some things that our team loves to include in every single game or piece of media. Ah, yeah, Do I think that's a good that? one, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it's mostly for narrative design team, because I know that they have a lot of different references, at least in Kingmaker there were a lot of them, and if you knew where to look, you would find them. Yeah. So yeah, are are there any like any any type of story like side stories, mini stories, side quests, or characters, anything that y'all like to include like reoccurring? Because I I know whenever I run games, uh, tabletop games, I have a few like one or two characters that like always show up in every game, and it's like we, as a running gag. If we can talk about this actually, so. if you can, if it's yeah. not spoilers, you know, uh, if it's spoilers, and feel free to be like, no, pass. <laughs> 
Hi, can you say something about that? Maybe you have something that you love to include. Oh, what? Hydrate. Oh my god. Okay, uh, are you asking about... Uh, huh? Uh, no, no, about no. References. Are you asking about our... Uh, no, 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 no. We're asking about no. reference in the game. In the base game. Mm -hmm. In quests, in dialogues. In, in the game quests. specifically. Yep. Yes. Or in other media, how it was formulated. Maybe in your uh, yeah. side stuff that you write. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Things that you'd like to include, like, just as a, I don't know, a signature thing. Also, Yulia also well, calls uh, this as a DM. To begin with, uh, when we just started de um, developing the game, we all took the original adventure path, uh, which is, uh, well, for those who don't know, the game, uh, the computer game that we're making is based on a published uh, series of modules by Paizo. Hmm. Um, which we build upon and uh, developed and um, so we played it and uh, it was uh, it was a really interesting uh, experience because uh, everybody uh, there were I think three or four parties simultaneously and each one had their own um, experience of playing it and we uh, compared oh, our notes. Indeed. Uh, how it went for you, how it went for us, uh, whether party died, whether party won. Um, and I created a character that I really, really loved. Oh, I sorry, wanted sorry. to um, put that person into the game, but there just was no place for them. Just, mm. uh, just nowhere to uh, implement that character. And in the end, she ended up having a very, very minor role in one of the quests but she's there and i'm i'm, I'm just glad that uh but uh, uh in my other games in the tabletops in the tabletop games that i run uh that character became uh, uh not a running joke but uh, a frequent a frequent character to come yeah. it was essentially the shovel knight yeah i i made a war priest of Farazma. Farazma is uh, the goddess of the dead, the goddess of burials, and um, in the original game that we played, uh, uh, she used the Farazma's um, holy weapon. Uh, the, uh, what's it, what's, what it was? What it was? A dagger. The dagger. Uh, then I created the same character in another game, and the master actually allowed me to choose um, Shovel as the uh, holy weapon. Because oh, that, that's great. That's that kind of better for Farazma, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and then that character just kicked up uh, popping in other uh, other games that I'm making. Sounds like a very fun character. Oh uh, yeah, like a grumpy, very unladylike lady <laughs> uh, with a bald head and the shovel that she uses to just punish those who. Uh, uh, I'm already in love. Dead. Oh yes. Well, I think she's not uh, the best uh, undead goddess. Let's say, no, sorry, goddess of death or god of death. I think in D&D they have a m more interesting version of gods of death. Uh, regarding uh, the references or something like that, uh, sometimes I l at least try to put some fine, funny references uh, in games in items when I can. So, for instance, uh, I think that's not going to be a spoiler in Pathfinder, because I'm <coughs> definitely sure that someone streamed that. So, in Pathfinder uh, Wrath of the Righteous, there is a statuette. I think it's something like statuette of a cat, and it has something inscribed on it, like Oval of Wisdom. It grants uh, some kind of bonuses, and the, uh, the weird comment, Huh, that's a weird name uh, for the statue of cat. And uh, some people got that references. Some some people didn't even on the second uh, playthrough. So it was just like, I, that's a funny, <laughs> stupid reference. And sometimes maybe like, it, it's more like internal jokes uh, that get into the game, like <clears throat> a ring that uh, does nothing except for, uh, gr that grants a funny, mm, visual effect and that's it for our beloved uh, gala i would say 
So it's just like it, it gets inspired by something that you see maybe uh, saw somewhere, like maybe from your colleagues. But yeah, some, somehow it sometimes makes it, uh, it back into the game. So sorry, mm. what is? Oh, I can't find. It? I can't wait to find that ring. To. Huh? What is the state statute is reference to? It's an owl, cat, owl, cat, statue of cat, owl of wisdom. It's an owl, cat <laughs> reference. <laughs> it is that simple. Ah. <laughs> uh. That's very clever, actually. See? No one, no one gets it. I'm just like... You're too smart, sorry. <laughs> oh, guys. Well, yeah. <laughs> there are some subtler uh, references. Um, some of them are, like, deny just... Uh, you can't uh, simply... Like, uh, remember in uh, Fallout there was a certain... Mm, blue mailbox there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we don't do stuff like that. We don't do uh, stuff that breaks immersion and just uh, references uh, completely different uh, games and books and stuff just for the sake of reference. Actually, I believe it's not a very good kind of uh, uh, Easter egg because, uh, well, why is it here in this world? Mm -hmm. That, yeah, no, that's fair. That, that uh, oh, I saw the thing in that other thing. It's not enough to make for a um, good reference. I think it should work as a pun or as a, some double intender, but uh, just taking stuff and stuffing it into uh, your game. I don't see the point. Hmm. Uh, a not lot fair. of a lot of terrible films from 2000 have already old memes that were really popular at that time oh it's, yeah it's a, it's a real problem getting putting in the wrong no. reference can no. make uh <laughs> the, yeah don't do make it look feel dated immediately yeah. once it's once it's out it's like oh this was a reference to a thing from 2007 and it is now <laughs> no one remembers later. yeah like mm -hmm. why why it is even there Oh. And you just look like a really awkward parent trying to be like the cool kids. <laughs> Hello, fellow yes. kids, yeah. Mm. I think we also try to be Remember cool, the cool streamers here, right? I'm not trying. Remember there was I, I, this I series terrible. of movies that started with uh, some really cool comedy. I think it started with scary movie. And then uh, each next one was worse and worse and worse until uh, the last uh, movies in the series were they were not even parodies they were yeah. just series of references yeah no, nothing, nothing behind uh, the by the moment the movie was out mm -hmm. that's yeah. those yes. old films oh, I just forget about that them. thing from that thing is not a joke by itself yeah <laughs> it's just pointing at a thing and going remember that it's like <laughs> Yeah, all right. And then you're just like, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't actually. <laughs> Considering that we're discussing... But speaking of dated jokes, uh, we do have some... Uh, well, they're not dated. They are classic. Mm -hmm. For example, we uh, in Kingmaker, spoiler, spoiler, we reference Gazebot joke, which is mm. one of the oldest oh, uh, yeah, yeah, RPG gay, uh, jokes uh, ever. Like, it's really, really old, but... It's classic. That's yeah, it's called classic. classic. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and discussing uh, the things that we love to include, there's another thing, because we love to include something from the media we love and watched and consumed. Uh, there are some franchises or books or st anything. Uh, and there's w there were a question from Jocket. If they... Yes. If... Uh, if you were allowed to reboot any franchise and uh, and you were the elite just any movie series game anything maybe books which would it be i i know the answer to this for myself but <laughs> i would really love to re reboot uh, in some way form chronicles of amber because mm -hmm. uh, i'm a huge fan mm -hmm. of gelato interesting it's just like I never finished that actually. I tried several times, but never finished. I think it really it will greatly translate to with uh, some form of uh, series. Twelve or so, long episodes, that 
that would be really cool yeah i, I can imagine that uh, anyway we have a uh, real game uh, game developers here so they can answer this question <laughs> So it ties into the question about the references. Uh, yep. You know, uh, in, uh, at some tables there are uh, jars for where you put a um, coin every time you reference Monty Python. Well, there is another franchise uh, that uh, works just like that for some tables that uh, we absolutely cannot reference in the game that we're mm -hmm. making. But I'd love to one day work on a game completely based on uh, that uh, franchise. It's a webcomic called Oglaf. Oh, oh, yeah. oh is <laughs> Sign great. Sign me in, oh. please. <laughs> you are a winner in this discussion. Like, <laughs> you are 100% winner in this discussion. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, a, a game based on Oglaf, I would, I would play the <laughs> heck out of that. Right. God, Adam, it'll it'll be the funniest game ever. Uh. Um, <laughs> kind of. And the most inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, it will be R-rated, yeah. definitely. Like it's one hundred percent R-rated game. Though we don't have enough of those, so why not? Especially such a yeah. funny thing. And there's a huge world building actually, if you read it through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's... There's a lot of actual lore there. <laughs> So weird to think about that. Um, that there's a lot of oh Yeah, as for me, I would be quite a boring person. I know that, well, the franchise are alive, but still, I would like to kind of do something new with them is oh, Mass Effect and Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Like, in general, mm. the Old Republic. So I would go for these two. There are new books about Re Old Republic, you know? Uh, yeah, uh, like I live in the world of computers. <laughs> I don't really, I, I actually have never ever read. They actually online. No, no, I mean, in terms of, I've never read a book on a movie or a computer, or basically a game franchise, like never. Star Wars, Mass Effect, Dragon Age, Warhammer, what else there is? Nope, never. Just one medium games. games. It's kind it's of fine. the opposite for me. I, okay, I'll be honest. I dislike, uh, I dislike the original movies uh, of the Star Wars, uh, including the original trilogy. I just do not like the mm. movies. None of them. Interesting. But uh, and and for a long time I was very hostile to the franchise in general. But then, then I learned that uh, the further you go from the um, original movies to the realm of comics, books, games, the more hidden gems there are. And I got hooked on the, actually, uh, first on the comics, and now I'm in a game based on uh, Star Wars, uh, in a, in an RPG, ongoing RPG uh, based on Star Wars, uh, with some um, brilliant people. I'm absolutely loving it, despite uh, the fact that I still hate the movies, kind of. <laughs> All fair, you know. You don't have to. You don't have to like it just because it's popular. And yeah, uh, I think a lot of people share that as well. Like especially with like shows right now, like The Mandalorian is like a spin-off that has nothing to do with like the main trilogy movies at all, and people love that because it's exploring a bunch of new stories and new interesting things that not just like save the world. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was reading the. Uh... Uh, first, the comic uh, Admiral Throne's trilogy. Yeah. Mm. No, it's Admiral really Throne good. is uh, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, and I was reading it, and I almost cried because uh, I'm reading it, and I see. Um, well, you see, um, I checked out the uh, prices for a certain mineral, and based on that, I uh, made some logistics uh, calculations, and I dis uh, deducted that certain political powers oh dear that that is the thing that uh the movies lack mm. you know i would say that Trump actual politics actually... actual uh, actual wars actually yeah, yeah, yeah there's there's not a lot of gray area or like open interpretation in a lot of the star wars movies to say that Thrawn is basically sherlock holmes in space <laughs> and you can fight me on Sorry, it what uh 
Thrawn is a Sherlock Holmes in space. Because he even mm. has his own oh, Watson. I would disagree. I would say that uh, Admiral Thrawn is um, Miles Forgus. Grand Gusman. Admiral, sorry. Grand Admiral Thrawn. Yes. <laughs> Miles for Cosigan, but blue. Also, <laughs> yeah, I can agree with that. And, Joket, you asked us about franchise. What about you? What oh, you I don't know. To there's too many. <laughs> there's too many games. I don't know, man. I, I'm i not a game developer, so I don't know. Uh, I guess. I'm trying it's, to think. It shouldn't be a game, you know? It might be a comic That's or true. book or series. Actually... Yeah, I would I would love to reboot um the Chronicles of Narnia movies cuz mm -hmm. like they they did like 3 of them and then they stopped because the kids kept getting way too old and I I adored the Lion the Witch in the Wardrobe and uh I know like the whole series of books is a, kind of like a uh bible uh, allegory but I don't know I I just like the the nice going on an adventure and fighting monsters and you know these kids that just you know, go on and become leaders and and mighty heroes. I don't know. It's just a simple story for me as a kid, I guess. But uh, it's a shame. I, I always thought that it was a shame that they stopped after three movies. And um, yeah, I think that's what I would do. Maybe it is good uh, that they stopped because now it can be rebooted. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Or either I that or the Aragon movie. That's another uh, fantasy movie based on a book that apparently was not very good. I had never read the book before I watched the movie, but I watched the movie oh, and I, I yes, enjoyed yes, it. The movie one. Yeah. Now about the about the blue dragon. Yeah. yeah. I heard apparently it was awful compared to the book. But uh if it is, then uh, hey, there you go. Uh, was, do it do it over again. Was there another Make movie it better. Golden Compass also in the uh, book? Yes, yeah, that was also supposed to be a oh, series, but it only but it did is, one movie. It is it is I think I read the series. books and the books are crazy. They are like anti Narnia. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. isn't it his dark materials in original? Yes. And now yes, it is a series. The thing about it is, now uh, there is a series based on it and it's really good. I guarantee it. Yeah, so I've heard. I, I watched and I the, really enjoyed. The original blew my mind because it was crazy uh, anti-religion. It was actually yeah. uh, based on uh, the heresy called uh, Gnosticism, uh, Gnosticism. And uh, the whole idea, spoiler, spoiler, is that God actually does exist but is evil. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And it goes just darker and darker from there. Oof. Uh, my, my, mm, the mind-blowing thing is that some people are protesting Harry Potter because apparently it is uh, witchcraft and demonic stuff and completely ignore the fact that there are games and uh, books that are actually... Um, openly anti-religion yeah but people who start panics about that well i guess they just don't read too much no they just oh. go to the bookstore point at uh the most um the biggest shelf and say well yeah that thing that thing is evil yeah it's because they only ever see like the mainstream stuff right like yeah. uh, it, it happened with doom way back in the day like uh, which is funny because in doom you're actually killing demons which you would think is a very christian thing to do you know <laughs> christians yeah. are against demons um, but I guess it's the ultra violence and the fact that it's everywhere and you know they they don't see games and movies the way we do so they only see oh this one game that exists or this one book sure. and because uh, it's 10 p.m. here and it's a time for a personal question oh personal question uh, time Jocket, do you want to read it yourself or should i read it <laughs> yeah for you? yeah this is a this is a personal question that i stole uh, anyone who's a fan of game grumps will know that aaron hansen came up with this question uh so pardon pardon the slight grossness but uh it's a i think it's a good litmus test a good personality quiz Think of the closest person to you, the personally, the person that you are closest to the most and tolerate the most and possibly love the most. Uh, they throw up on you every day, at the same place every day, at the same time every day, all the time. It's just like a compulsive thing uh, that it just happens. You don't know why, but it happens. How many days would you last before you consider, like, 
them that that you would get really mad at them and you just can't be around them anymore like or or maybe maybe you would have to cut ties with them i don't know something awful like like you just no longer consider them a friend they throw up on you every day how many days would it take okay i think the question is kind of wrong hmm. uh i think the question is kind of wrong and instead of answering i will fix it for you <laughs> the correct form of, the, of this question is uh how many days will it take uh so for you so that it stops being gross and becomes your king <laughs> oh! oh that's a good one i, like I, I guess for some people it would be huh I, 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 mean, I guess. About the person you love. That says uh, that says volumes about <laughs> our narrative designers, actually. <laughs> so. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's that's answers. Wow, that was that was I, actually good. You are the first person I've ever heard take it in that direction, <laughs> and I hate that you have some right to say that because it's true. Some people would turn that into a kink. The, the, I don't the, doubt. That's just too good. Uh, I I answered it in a uh. discussion with Jokat, and I said that it's just like, I, I, I you can easily get used to it, and just <laughs> when you need, you have a bag with yourself or some. Yeah, some. Of, uh, yeah. Yeah. Some Use people do answer that they would learn to to live with it. That they would like get a get a plastic bag and wear it every day or something or. As you suggest, some people might develop a enjoyment for it because I don't know, people yeah. are strange I, I, I like just, that. I just can't answer this question anymore. It's just uh, can you answer it? Yes, now? I can. Obviously, my answer is six days. That's mine. Really? Yes, six. Yeah, and I have, I have logic uh, behind each one too. Like the first day, it's just like, oh, it's sometimes people throw up. I would just kind of be like, oh man, they threw up. And the second day, I would be concerned. I'd be like, oh, are you okay? And the third day, I would want to take, I would tell them like, hey, you should go to the hospital. And the fourth day, if they haven't, I would have driven them to the hospital myself, like personally. The fifth day, I would just think it's weird that they went to the hospital. They're probably taking their medication. And then the sixth day, I would be like, okay, uh, whether uh, you've got to be doing this on purpose. Like, that's how I would feel. Like, I, I don't know if they are, but that's how I would feel. Six days in a row after going to the hospital, you've got to be doing it on purpose, right? Oh, that's me. Uh, I'm not sure about that, actually, uh, if we're serious for a moment. Uh, what you're talking about is basically uh, the question boils down to what would you do if your lo loved one develops a debilitating uh, disability? And, well, this is kind of a limited test to a person, mm. but uh, when you look at this seriously, it stops being funny. Yeah. So, oh okay so yeah me, i didn't think about it in that in that yeah basically for way. me when i mm. uh, heard that question i th like my immediate answer was like one two days just like come on just like but uh, then mm. i realized that i was thinking more about like i don't know some kind of random boyfriend that i might have not really a close person but then i decided like okay if, if it is going to be my mom for instance what will happen because that would be the closest right. person and then i realized that i'm actually living with two old pugs that are not really throwing every day but kind of <laughs> not the not the healthiest cleanest uh type of dogs in general and i somehow managed to live with them for two years so just like yeah probably i can't live with that it i probably will be irritated from time to time because i might be tired but in general it's not a that big deal if you think about it Okay. Yeah, I, I guess if you if you put it that way, like as a, it's just everyone's got their own quirk. I, I think it's just the main thing that sets it apart is that it's on you, you know, yeah. that that it always happens on you. But I don't know. Maybe some people can live with that. Maybe some people can learn to tolerate and just be like, well, this is this is life. Just like how every day we have to eat, every day we have to sleep. It's just a part of life now. Yeah. Every day we have to suffer. Every day we have to get thrown up on. Yeah. It's just, just part of life now. <laughs> that, that sounds a bit depressing, actually. But we live in Russia. <laughs> it's <laughs> every day is depressing. <laughs> None of us is getting younger. At some point, um, no, most people no, have no, to no. live with the fact that from this day now on, they will have to live with themselves. Uh, 
throwing up every day or having aches every day. That's just part of the life in these bodies and we will have to um, live with it until the moment of the transhumanism. <laughs> One if, day. If, if it will come. Then we'll be free of our meaty bags and <laughs> uh, be happy as uh, in a, our perfect robot bodies. Yep, when we, we can transfer that, our consciousness uh, that's just into, a, into a perfect vessel. <laughs> I just leave this uh, yeah. comment in chat that I was thinking about playing a game with devs listening to a discussion about throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, this question is analogy of raising a baby. Th th that's actually good. Th that's actually yeah. true. They <laughs> throw up, and usually I think they throw, especially when they are very young, throw up on you. Okay. So I, just uh, like... Let's not discuss parenting <laughs> problems. We have like, an expert on that, actually, so we can invite her someday. Oh, uh, yes. And she's often here, actually. Um, and two more gamey questions. Um, yeah. <laughs> let's switch topics. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, talking about companions, how they are created and how they come to life. If I recall correctly, that was one of the interesting questions for you, yeah, Joket? I think. Uh, how how do they... can... Yeah, I guess. Yeah, what are the stages that you go through whenever you uh, come up with and create and design a companion character? Like, uh, yeah. Oh, just. Stop me because this is something I could talk about for hours. <laughs> no, go on. Um, Let's if have you are a cup really interested, in... yes, sorry. Uh, I was joking that we can uh, go and take a cup of tea while you will be talking. I was just like, <laughs> I have tasteless jokes. Well, yes. just, just... well, we can actually go, with... but uh, it's actually interesting for me. So, can you go? <laughs> can you go with? <laughs> yeah, I'll be here. So, first of all, I need to say that uh, if you're really interested in this particular question, then we have uh, a little article in our Kickstarter campaign about this. Uh, it takes on stage of creating the character uh, and their, their, all of them together and every single one of them. So you can just check out our um, check out our Kickstarter page. Uh, there was a like a big article about that. Mm. But uh, a long story short, uh, first of all. Uh, what are the uh, what are the companions? They are standing for your well party members. Like the computer is standing for your DM, who can be cruel or forgiving, uh, who can uh, you can uh, well have a home rule. Uh, let's not have uh, permanent death and let's not have uh, swarms completely eviscerate us every time. Okay. Okay, it, it's fine that way. Uh, so the same way, uh, your companions are standings for your other party members, except, um, well, first of all, they will never take uh, uh, your shiny, beautiful rulebook with pizza-stained fingers. <laughs> and second, they mostly do as you say, but not always. Uh, that's the thing about uh, your companions is that uh, they have your, they have their own characters, they have their own flaws, um, and we need to walk that tightrope between um, uh, them being well, lifeless uh, puppets of yours, and them being insufferable. Because it's really easy to make a character who is who has a strong character to them. And because of that, are completely hated by everyone. Uh, damn, I um, in Kingmaker, in Kingmaker, I uh, okay, I won't go deep into spoilers, but I did one thing that I thought was pretty tame, pretty tame, really. Uh, it's nothing like when your um, companion, uh, well, other party member in a tabletop role rolling role playing game, uh, robs you while you're asleep. It's mm -hmm. nothing like when they decide that. Oh, I'll just kill that NPC and have you deal with the consequences. No, I'll, I just had one of the uh, NPCs, um, one of the companions, uh, embezzle stuff, some money from your um, treasury. Not even lots. It was a part of their uh, character arc. Um, I was not prepared to see how much hate that uh, brought up in uh, some of the players. How mm. dare she? 
How dare she take my money? And it's super tame compared to the stuff that some players do to other players. No, yeah. Something about so... like a visceral reaction to when like a game does something so minor, like like so many people get upset whenever say a an enemy drinks like a potion and heals themselves. I don't know something about when something tame happens in a video game of all things. It's like. Yes, but the idea is that uh, these these characters, these virtual people, they need to feel like people to you. They need to feel like uh, not just... Well, that's the thing that uh, I never liked about uh, the original Baldur's Gate, uh, is the fact that um, char so, um, companions there, they felt uh, almost unexistent. Uh, they had very, very thin personalities. And, uh, well, maybe it felt uh, differently if you started your uh, romance with the genre from Baldur's Gate and then moved to later things like Dragon Age or um, Mass Effect. But if you started f with the hype length that uh, Mass Effect uh, well, gave you, then going back to um, Baldur's Gate, it felt almost immaterial. These characters, they... Uh, like they were not even there. So, our main reference was uh, the later games like uh, Dragon Age, and we tried to give our our characters enough of a character. But that's not all. That's just the beginning. Uh, you see, uh, they're not just um, single characters. It's not like there's one and another and another. No, there are a, an ensemble. So this is where our story meets um, some rigid, um, rigid uh, requirements from the uh, mechanics part, because we need to have uh, to uh, cover all the party members. You need to have a tank. You need to have a. Um, damage dealer, a wizard, a healer, uh, you need to have all these kinds of, well, mechanical characters in your party. You need to have to fill um, different roles. Uh, you will need different love interests, you will need uh, comic reliefs, you will need uh, creepy, uh, lovely, uh, scary, uh, uh, aloof. Again, uh, you will need to have evil and good characters. You will need to have chaotic and lawful characters. And uh, these all are several layers of, well, requirements that uh, we have to actually uh, make peace with. Mm -hmm. And uh, in addition to that, when we're done with all the, uh, well, checkbox, when we're, when we're sure that we have different uh, um, types of characters, we have different uh, party roles. After that comes the sweetest part, which is the golden ticket. The golden ticket is something that every um, every narrative designer gets. The golden ticket is the ability to put uh, your personal uh, character into the game. You still need to uh, abide by these rules. That is, uh, you still need to somehow stuff them into these checkboxes. But you get to create your own uh, brainchild and put them into the game. And from that point on, they're your responsibility. Uh, you're supposed to do their quest line, their banters. Uh, you are the owner of this character, and if someone else uh, writes them, you mm -hmm. get uh, some narrative control over that, you get to check it. But uh, you have to love and you have to let go, because this is the first thing that you need to learn when you are developing a game. When you're working with someone, you have to learn to seed uh, creative control. So you take, take your brainchild, and then you give them to other people. You give them to the designers who uh, change that character uh, mechanics-wise. 
and you learn uh, some cool things about what they can do in the battlefield, <laughs> which can be really um, surprising for you and can interact with the stuff you made up uh, in your head about the character in um, unexpected ways. You give them to the artists who give their own interpretation of your brainchild, and you need to live to you need to live with the fact that uh, the person that you made up in your head will look like this, not the way you had them in your head. Can I, uh, uh, you give them to the um, sound designers, uh, and again, uh, you might love or hate or be surprised by uh, the artists, uh, the I'm sorry, voice actors who get there. Um, so, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's a complicated it's all a big, story. It's all a big collaborative effort where everyone gets their own like little say on how things, like how changes that go on with these different characters. Yes. Mm. Yes. Uh, sorry for ranting. <laughs> no, no, no. It's love. It's interesting I, to said, hear about. I could go on, on and on. Uh, if I recall yeah. correctly, and... you also provide some visual references for characters, no? Or well, wrong. yes, but uh, you provide references, uh, you have your wish list, but uh, it's up to the, um, well, the final say is uh, not yours. Mm -hmm. You come up with where that uh, process starts, but um, you do not have a final say on where it ends, because there is the, uh, there, well, let's begin. In with the fact that has a creative director, Alexander Mishulin, uh, for whom the whole game is his big, big brainchild. And uh, it must be really frustrating for him uh, to run into the fact that uh, our other, other members of the party have different ideas about different parts of this game of his. But he's the keeper of the um, complete vision, because the game needs vision. And the game needs someone who keeps that vision in the head. Someone who um, looks over everything and makes sure it's consistent. And if uh, he doesn't like what you do, well, you can either uh, try to bargain with them, you can uh, try to reason and tell that no, actually, it does work. Let, just, 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 just listen. Just listen. It, it does work, and let me tell you how! Or you will have to give up and say, yeah, yeah, my idea is cool, but it doesn't really work with everything else that uh, yeah. going on I can't, here. Can't, so, uh, as much as point. everyone, yeah, as much as everyone has wonderful and great ideas, it's they don't always work together all the time and you can't just make a it, it won't like you said the consistency when it's just a mess of ideas all thrown together without like a proper direction it can yes, be a mess uh, we saw games like that and sometimes it was <laughs> uh cool but it was always well not pretty mm -hmm. um also uh, I have a weird question, Thai. Uh, I remember that for Killmaker you worked on Lindsay, right? The Bard? Yes. And who is your character in the Breath of the Righteous? Can you share it? Uh, uh, sorry that I forgot about that, because it's so hard to remember what everyone, do, what everyone does. Well, the character that I came up with was Lindsay, but uh, here's the thing. I keep getting... Even now, people uh, shame me about certain, I won't spoil it, but certain events that happen late in the game with uh, Lindsay. They keep telling me that I am a terrible person for coming up with this stuff. And the thing is, uh, that particular thing was not my idea. Mm. Uh, when I came to the game, uh, there was the idea that there was going to be a, a, a bard, a bard mm -hmm. who writes the book uh, that... Uh, uh, who writes the book about the uh, main character and they have that storyline that ends uh, in a certain way uh, and it was all. It was a foregone conclusion but the character, the voice, um, the race, uh, visuals, 
that was mine. Ending of the story, that wasn't mine, <laughs> but that, I had to work to, towards that ending. That, that's actually interesting, See? because it feels natural, so you did a wonderful and great job. And someone in Thank the chat you. said that uh, you are a terrible person and a wonderful writer. How is that? <laughs> I, oh, I would say that Thai actually is an awesome person. You, if you would meet him in real life, you would really love him. Uh, and oh, who, who is an, uh, who, who is your uh, companion in Breath of the Righteous? It's mostly interesting for me, maybe, only, so <laughs> sorry to ask it. Uh, Ember. Ah, oh, oh. Th that explains a lot, actually. Yep. She never lives in my party. So here's the thing, uh, again, for those who didn't uh, check out Breath of the Righteous yet, um, this is a game about crusades and yes these are fantasy crusades in a fantasy world uh, uh they are only were loosely based on the actual history just like um okay uh, i keep hearing stuff like you cannot put this thing into pathfinder because this thing did not exist in middle ages well fantasy is not middle ages True. <laughs> fantasy is uh, fantasy worlds are their own things that are very very loosely based on the stuff from our world, but mm, it's just not an argument. Uh, the fact that we have queens, well, we also have dragons, we also have magic, we also have actual gods who uh, actually can uh, you know actually smite you. Yeah, that's this is a very different world, and uh, there is no one-to-one -one, um, uh, relation with ours. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, our game is very loosely based on a uh, highly mythologized, very bloody, very weird at times, very scary, sometimes glorious and sometimes very, very, very infamous. Uh, page of uh, the Euro uh, European history. Um, we draw inspiration from it, and uh, sometimes we can take parts and put them in our game. Sometimes they just do not apply. For example, the fact that the actual crusades were done against, well, actual people, not evil, de uh, not literal demons. Um, but the part that always fascinated and horrified me personally in all that history was the part of the Child's Crusade. Uh, the Children's Crusade, where a group of children, uh, led by a completely insane uh, child... Um, <coughs> I'm sorry. An insane child preacher who came barefooted and uh, brought all the other children with them and they thought that uh, there was going to be a miracle that because they are blameless children uh, where the sinful adults uh, couldn't do their part uh, God will help the innocent children to just waltz into the uh, Holy Land and take it over and it, ha it all ended horribly, yeah. of course it all ended horribly in actual history, but um, that image, that image of an innocent child uh, who is uh, bare feet and wearing rags, and his has this uh, insane glimmer in their eyes, and is just so saintly that uh, they can prevail where uh, uh, more powerful, uh, more smart adults uh, couldn't couldn't prevail mm -hmm. that's a powerful image that's a powerful image and uh in a fantasy world it can, can actually work yeah so i created amber uh, a burnt witch who survived being burnt in the sick. a person who is uh on one hand she is um she's an atheist she does not well Obviously, gods exist in the world of Pathfinder, but she does not believe that they um, deserve being uh, um, that de 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 they deserve being worshipped. Uh, again, uh, it's an actual heresy from actual history of uh, different religions. 
religions, uh, just like some heretics from uh, actual uh, medieval times. She prays to good gods. Uh, she prays for them to become more kind and actually help people. She prays to demons. She prays to demons and ask them to repent. Um, and even though she does not worship actually any god when uh, the cultists take her and put her uh, a little spoiler on their unholy altar she starts crying and her uh, tears make the unholy altar burn uh, I'm absolutely in love with that character and I'm, I myself am horrified with her and I just hope that you will love her and uh, be scared by her as much as I am Again, sorry for writing. Yeah, that uh, No, thank you. That's a really interesting part yeah. about your work. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we wanted to remind you to vote. Cheers! Cheers! Don't forget to vote on our Twitch. Yep. And put the poor ghost to rest. He already yes. crusaded his life away. Poor, poor, poor. Um, sorry. <coughs> <coughs> poor ghost <coughs> to rest. Yes. <laughs> Oh, we are all lawful good here, right? Yes, I'm. I'm the most lawful good person ever. Actually, Joe, uh, which is what alignment do you like the most? Oh, I really like chaotic good. Just okay, like okay. someone, someone who is willing to maybe break their oaths and and break promises for the good. Just like no rules. I'm gonna do the best that I can, no Lizzie, matter what come, anybody come. says. Lisa here also likes uh, Kota Good. I also like yeah. Kota Good. You also like Kota Good. Yeah. Oh my gosh! But, but actually, I won't play as Kota Good in uh, Breath of the Righteous because I love concept of Aeon, the judge, cosmic judge. Also, if you w would love to be a Kota Good character in Breath of the Righteous, you will get your own purple dragon. Ooh! Yes. <laughs> She's awesome. Oh, she is cool. Yeah, nah. really awesome. Uh, anyway. Um, Going from a long, interesting discussion about characters, there was now a question. Trocat, yeah, what is the biggest surprise? Yep. Hmm? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you guys working on the game, uh, uh, I'm sure a lot of the audience, including me, uh, we don't know a lot about game design or, like, what it takes to logistically, like, make a game going in and working on it, like, physically, I guess. Um, what is the biggest surprise that you didn't expect uh, when you st first started working on games? Like, you didn't realize it uh, until you started working on games. Like, something that they just don't teach you. Uh, for me, I will start because I will be pretty much short. For me, I think there were two or three things. One is that I didn't expect that I can be a, at least a decent game designer. <laughs> I mean, that was mm -hmm. a revelation, I would say. Uh, but uh, I didn't expect that I would love to make games more than playing games. So I mm -hmm. get much more fulfillment uh, from building a game than from playing a game, which was unexpected, but I love it. So that was probably the biggest surprise for me. For me, I already said that but uh, let me put it this way uh, the thing that was hardest to learn was to uh, on one hand seed creative control on other take creative control uh, over places that were not supposed to be yours and the biggest surprise is always when you see other people's interpretations of uh, the stuff that you started and uh, it's really beautiful and surprising when you see how uh, they take your idea and develop it way better than you ever could. Mm -hmm. So, ooh, actually, I have a new question now. Since you work on narrative, and you know that was your answer, um, I guess, uh, uh, how does writing for, like, uh, writing narrative for a game be uh, that has so many choices? Like, do, uh, was there something that you discovered while writing for games that is different for like writing, say, I don't know, like for a book or like a, a movie, I guess? Like more traditional well, stories, I guess. Movies. Well, no, no, uh... but like, 
you know, how how does this compare to writing more traditional story or telling more traditional stories? I would say that uh, it's not just interactivity uh, by itself, but uh, in the RPGs, it's the the thing that I called uh, 3D writing, where uh, not only things that you do matter, but also things that you do not matter. Mm. Uh, mm. You're writing a story that uh, simultaneously moves into every possible direction. And um, I read some theorists of literature who believe that this is why uh, games are actually an inferior uh, inferior medium. Because uh, in a movie you have uh, total creative control and you do not make uh, let uh, the audience make choices. Uh, you show them the thing that they need to know. But I think that is a very reductive way of looking at this. Uh, because, uh, well, even if you're writing a novel, a completely linear novel, there still are going to be these uh, points where you made one choice and didn't make the other. And this is where the fan fiction, of course, comes in. Uh, even if you are like some writers who absolutely hate fan fiction, you cannot get rid of the fact that you gave your, well, the simplest thing, you gave your main character two love interests, they flitted for for some time. You created two opportunities. You only took one. The second is still is an untaken opportunity. Uh, the fact that you did not that is a part of the story. So it's not a really big jump hmm. uh, to write in two stories. One where you took one opportunity, the other when you took the, uh, the other one. Now you mul multiply this by uh, a thousand, and you get uh, you get a computer game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting way to think about it. I never thought about it that way. Just like a a series of what ifs. What if they went with someone else? What if they stayed home instead of going on the adventure? What if they uh, became a murder hobo? <laughs> yes, uh, all these what ifs are a part of uh, the medium. Uh, even if it's uh, completely uh, linear and does not have these what ifs actually written, and uh, my proof is the existence of fan fiction, mm -hmm. because the fan fiction uh, again, uh, okay, I'm not going on a long rant. I'm going to keep it very <laughs> very short, but uh, my thought about that is um, people keep uh, arguing about whether fan fiction is a legitimate uh, literature form or if it's inferior to uh, to well commercial writing. And I just think that it's not a right way to look at fan fiction. Mm -hmm. I believe that uh, well sometimes sometimes fiction becomes uh, actual literature of its own and nobody can say that it isn't but in that um, in middle in that middle form uh, I believe that fan fiction is a way it's not a way of writing but a way of reading books oh that's interesting see uh, when you read a book uh, you have all these uh, alternative things in your head you think of them and uh, the first step on fat fiction is when you just uh, put it down on a paper. Mm. It may be uh, not original. It may be exploitative. It may be. Um, it may not hold up as literature as itself because it's not supposed to. Because in its primary form, in its primary form, fan fiction is a way of reading when you just uh, put your what ifs on the paper. I like that. And yeah, then it's... you, if you keep on, then you might have it evolved into a literature of it all. Mm -hmm. I, so... I like that way of thinking of fan fiction. It's just how you, like you said, how you read and how you think about the thing that you like, just thinking about the world in your brain. Wow. Yes, uh, you create fanfics uh, whenever you read a book. 
you always do it. You oh, just yes. uh, All time. usually don't write it down. I usually uh, come up with fun fictions before I go to bed. I, I had this uh, weird habit that I developed when I was uh, very young and I couldn't fall asleep. So I decided to kind of uh, continue these uh, fairy tales that I've just read or watched, I don't know. So I developed all this fun fiction. So now each time I go to bed, I have to, I don't know, develop a fun fiction based on the anime or game or movie that I just watched every single day. And to quote uh, Lindsay, or actually her teacher, or to be honest, uh, some other writer that I uh, stole that idea from, <laughs> what is a human if not a animal who tells stories? Mm. Cool. So yes, uh, when, why I even uh, brought up fan fiction because uh if we look at fan fiction as a way of reading then uh that kind of storytelling that we do in a game uh is just a part where you put that one where you do not make it just um linear and have the player read this one thing that you did but you just put the alternatives uh into the base thing and let mm -hmm. the player um make choices and then uh, make fun fictions in the head uh, based on that. That's what mm. role playing is. Drop the bass. I imagine that can get out of control really quickly though in terms of scope just like going, choose, picking one path and like developing this full story for it and then you're like oh I didn't start on the other path yet. Oh no. Drop and... the mix. Yeah. Um yeah, that was an interesting uh, discussion. <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, you guys having fun? Yeah, sorry. I, I hope you haven't watched that. <laughs> the, that no, awful. I totally don't have the stream up right now so that Good. I can see y'all playing with a pig. Good. That's, that's a relief, actually. That's a huge relief. Wait a sec, you have a pig there? <laughs> sorry. Yes. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm terribly sorry. Um, Is that the same pig that uh, Goblin has? Yeah. Basically, yeah. <laughs> That's an okay. Okay, for those of us who uh, <laughs> explain the Don't joke, please, them. because this is a reference. That's this is itself uh, a reference. A truly and Russian a terrible, joke. terrible one. And you're a terrible person for doing that. In Akenji, bring the pigs. That's just a pig. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry about that, really. <laughs> uh, um, so, after discussing the narrative, um, I think, uh, Jokit, what question? Would yeah, you like I, I, th I think I got one. I don't know if this question actually applies very well because this is more of a management question, I guess. Uh, uh, this one? Uh, the yeah, how does the studio I don't think handle? That we, will, we won't be able to no. answer that, sorry. Okay, uh, never mind. Uh, we can skip that one. Uh, the, they most likely will be transferred to the next project or there will be job. There's always job to do, really. It's just like. Uh, even if part of the job is finished, uh, there's no way one part of the team has nothing to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. there there's all this a constant, uh, it's a constant thing, yeah, uh, if they finish this part, we will go to the next project, like with every other work. There's no... Mm, no sitting around yeah. and playing, just like, work, work, work! Sometimes what you works. even don't have time to do everything you want, because there's not enough time. Can I ask a... Uh, we're, it's funny because we actually touched on a lot of these just through natural discussion, so it's kind of like yeah. crossing them off. But um, may I ask a another personal... It's not as gross, but but another <laughs> personal question. Yeah, sure. I think uh, if we won't to, wouldn't like to answer it, we won't answer yeah. it. Well, yep. Yeah, I, I guess just uh, what are y'all's favorite like non-RPG games? Oh, um, that's easy. I love grand strategy games and cos mm. uh, cosmos simulators like uh, mm. like dangerous and uh, warhammer total war and imperator realm i think top three strategies for me and cosmos mm. sim do you like civilization at all 
Um, I prefer Age of Wonders. I, Age of Wonders. Yeah, I think it is much better game and much more fun than Civilization VI. Mm. And and Cosmos Simulators because I love space. Space is awesome. <laughs> exploring exploring new stuff is uh, I don't know how to put it. It's just a dream of mine, I think. But not the one uh, you try to achieve because it's just like, yeah, it would be cool and awesome to be uh, a pioneer in the space, but you're just like, eh, no one goes to space for, uh, haven't gone to space too far for a long time, and <laughs> only now we're thinking about achieving something bigger than sending people to the orbit. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, yeah, and uh, summon the elect obviously, summon the elector counts. And bring me to my men. Is it a Warhammer reference? Yeah, that's a, it's uh, that's a, it's a always, Carl If there is a reference, it will be Warhammer references. I, I get it. I, I'm learning this, but while watching the Twitch streams, people discussing if there is a reference, Warhammer. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a, it has great characters and memeable moments. So, hi, Jocket, Julia, what are your favorite games? Yeah, non RPGs, non RPG, because we could talk, I, we could talk about <laughs> RPGs all the time. But I want to, yeah, I want to hear about like other genres y'all play. Well, are you talking about uh, video games specifically, or all kind of games? Any kind of, if you you know prefer to answer not video games, just like other. Well, games with video games, I play really almost all kind of games. It's easier to say what I don't play. <laughs> Uh, I don't play many grand strategies and I don't play many simulators mm -hmm. and I play everything else like mm. Mm. but what are your what are your favorites I would say okay uh, I love uh, I love point and click games and uh, recently there has been a little mm, renaissance of that uh, supposedly dead genre and shout out to widget games who made the uh, blackwell series which is an absolutely beautiful uh, urban fantasy with ghosts and uh, demons and uh, people who try to manage them in modern world mm. uh, i love horrors uh, another shout out uh, Currently, uh, there's a series of tiny games. It call, it's called it's uh, called Dread X Collection. Yeah, I know. I know uh, one of the people who worked on Dread X Collection. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> I absolutely love that. No. Um, well, let me put it this way: I like games to do unexpected things. I like games that do uh, weird stuff. I don't always finish games, but uh, I really love to run a game and see that it does something crazy. Uh, I loved, for example, I don't usually play puzzles, but I loved uh, Baba Is You. Mm. Yeah, oh, that's oh. a good one. <laughs> but, <sighs> never has a game made me feel more stupid than Baba Is You. Yeah. So, uh, from many points of view, from game design, uh, see, I'll, I try to look at games from uh, different points of view. I like to look at them uh, like a player, so I could just have fun, because, you know, it's really easy to burn out and stop having fun when games are your joke. Mm -hmm. uh, I love um, another cool example is uh, well, it is an RPG, but it's very uh, unconventional one. It's called Hylix. Mm -hmm. Hylix, do you know that one? Mm -hmm. Ah, the one Could from you... uh, Gothic Creator? Ah, no, it's Elix. No, 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 no. It's Elix. Hylix. Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, the thing about it is, uh, it is that uh, it is surreal. All of the text is machine generated garbage. Like all the text that you read makes no sense. So it's all the text in the game is completely bonkers. Uh, so it's basically and... Ulysses of game development. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Uh, and the visuals, uh, visuals are crazy too because they're made of clay, 
like do you remember um what it was called uh neverhood neverhood mm -hmm. kind of like that yeah. it's made of clay and then that clay is uh um is put into very low resolution uh resolution uh, low resolution pictures uh so it looks like um Pixels? a game that could be made in maybe 90s because of that uh no 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 not pixels uh clay that was um Pixelated. photographed yeah. and then uh resolution was radically lowered so it still looks like uh, uh it looks like what you could see in a game from 90s where they took a uh, low resolution photo and uh, put it into a game mm, it kind of like the old bonkers and uh I... yeah Aesthetically, it's wow. It's just out there. Um, I really, really loved uh, Death Stranding because of just how weird it is. Hmm. I just love that idea of taking something that by no means should have been a triple A game and make it a triple A game with a triple A budget. Mm -hmm. Because by its uh, core, it's a deeply, deeply uh, indie project. It's a weird thing by... Uh, well, it has a vision, and the vision is absolutely bonkers. And it just had to have some, I don't know, stars align uh, in the right way for it to get uh, enough money to be created. Yeah. Because uh, it is by no means a conventional, uh, conventional triple uh, A game, but it was made, and it mm -hmm. was beautiful, and it was terrible. It was exciting. It was uh, tedious. It was frustrating. Uh, it made me, uh, it made me tear up. Uh, it made me want to tear my controller away and <laughs> just break it. Uh, it was a hell of a journey. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, I like it when a game makes me surprised, right. and any game mm. can do that. Uh, I think I will cancel my myself right now. Basically, when I will say I will tell what I like. Uh, when I like, like I really like to play idle games, like and Sims games, and I really love the games that play themselves. Uh, the reason mm. why is that I can kind of put the game to play itself and do some other stuff like I don't know cl to clean the house to work a little bit more and that's why I usually uh, watch twitch streams just to see how people play the game that's kind of me being productive you kind of play the game through someone uh, else's experience and then you do something else yeah what's your favorite idol game <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Actually, I've played a l lots of them. I can't say that I have a one favorite idol game because usually after 100 hours, you kind of change the game and go to like just change the game. Just like, yeah, that's <laughs> enough for me. How many hours? Uh, 100, 300 hours. It's idle game. It's just there. It's just playing yeah. itself. Or you could play multiple of them at once. They're idle games. I you used, don't have to do I anything. I used to do that as well. I just like two or three of them on my background while I'm doing something else. So, yep. <laughs> have oh. you played Loop Hero? I did. Ah, uh, yes. I, I know about one like idle game that is uh, the one from Wizards of the Coast. About the oh, Dungeon yes. This group. one as well. I played that. Uh, I played all of them. <laughs> Look here, I, I like personally, hmm? I personally go back to Cookie Clicker every now and then. Oh, Cookie Clicker, yeah, <laughs> played that one as well. No, no, just no. the purest form. The people mixing up idle game and idle game. And oh, uh, yeah, game. no, we're not, I, 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 we're not, we're not talking about idols like the anime dancing on the stage with the singing. No, we're actually, not. that was the first thing I thought that uh, you just said yeah, about like, idol games. I was like, no, wait, idol. idol games? <laughs> no, no, no. What's about actually, are there novels? idol idol games? Idol, I, oh my god! I'm sure there's one out there where where you 100. just you just got your idols dancing and then you get I don't know cheer points or something. <laughs> if not, someone should make that. Make that an oh, idol game. Uh, idol, I, oh my god. An idol, idol game. <laughs> By the way, what's about visual novels? 
or no? You used to play ah. that. I, I actually love only I, I love one dating sim. This is maybe a visual novel. <laughs> Dream Daddies. Oh, oh, I, I didn't I, play I that. Finished, I, uh, I finished it several times. E. They're all cool. I really love the cast there. But, yeah, you heard Lisa. She's here helping us. Yeah. Does uh does Ace Attorney count? They're kind of like visual novels, right? Mm, maybe. Kind, kind of, of yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. I would say. Yeah, I like. I like. I like me some Ace Attorney. Maybe we shouldn't mention it because some Russian memes. <laughs> uh, anyway, I wanted another question. There was actually an interesting one uh, that you asked me, and we wanted to ask to our awesome developers. Um, and I think it's a bit of a pain, maybe, uh, if they won't, don't want to ask it, it's okay. What is the request the we get most often, oftenly uh, from the players, and the reason why we won't do something? Yeah, I, I asked that one because I, you know, uh, understandably that's more of a management question as well, yeah. or like a director question. So it's okay if you guys can't really answer it. But yeah, I, I just wanted to throw that out there because again, players don't really know a lot of what goes on behind the scenes. I know that uh, players, me as well, me as a player in our game, we always request more romances. Like this yeah. is. All the time, we need more romances. And Romance. portraits! Romance, portraits, but romances mostly just like, we need more romance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and why can't you? I, I know most, a lot of the time, it's just time. Yeah. We can't because oh, time. Let me tell you, let me <laughs> tell you. Uh, remember me telling you about Amber? You know, the or, saintly oh, no, no. child oh who God. is all a burnt, completely burnt, coated scars witch, mm -hmm. and also underage. Well, I keep seeing people asking if you can romance them, and what can mm. I say? But no, no, yeah. <laughs> what? No, yeah. get help. <laughs> it's sometimes, uh, as I understand it, sometimes this is not good for a character arc that is presented. For example, it doesn't fit for that character. Yeah, the not uh, everyone who can be romanceable. Some people just don't want it, or might like you only as a friend. Why not? Right. Yeah. I, I guess that goes into narrative design of like, oh, why can't I romance this character? It's because it's like, well, maybe that's not what this character is about, you yeah. know? Or, or, or maybe, maybe this character does not serve that type of story. Or this is not his goal or her goal or their goal. It's uh, really mm -hmm. important for a character to tell his uh, their story in full, not just uh, be um, someone you can... <laughs> a person from a dating scene for you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And sometimes, let's be honest here, well, first of all, we do have more romances. More romances is what we do have, because it was, uh, it was a, a stretch goal in our Kickstarter. Yeah. It, literally, it, it literally read more romances. <laughs> And we took money for that, we did that. But more social goal. is still not all everything we wanted to do. There are still some characters that we wish we could uh, afford making romances for, but uh, there's a thing that's called feature creep. And it's <laughs> called creep because it's really creepy, and it tell, tends to kill games uh, if you let it uh, run rampart. Scope we management just can't do everything we want. Sometimes uh, you need to choose, yep. and something just ends up. We also chosen. had a romance as a social goal, so for reposting or uh, and providing other activities, you could unlock Vinny Golfrey as a romance, and people managed it from yeah. support from Co Carnage and some other streamers and YouTubers. Thanks to her. But I think, yeah, apart from romances, uh, people, like in general, the community always wants mo more. And I think that's a natural state of a community. More items, <laughs> more reactivity, more features, more gameplay, more bosses in general, because different people want different stuff. And there is a lot of different requests, like crafting system, a better crafting system, uh, better items. I don't know. 
Lots of that. But there's a comment that, see, she understands us. Um, actually, most of the people in the team, uh, I think all the people on the, in the team understand that there's really a lot we could add, but if we will add infinite number of things to the game, it will take infinite it will number of hours player. to make It'll it. It'll never yeah. come out, yeah. yeah. So You've got to yeah. ship eventually. So this is uh, why do you remember? Uh, do you remember the success slash failure story of one of the big uh, Kickstarter gaming projects, uh, Broken Age? Yes, that? That, that that's a big uh, example of feature creep. They got so much money that they thought, oh, we got to use this money for something, and just brought on more and more things, added more and more features, and just bloated the game to the point where they needed even more money because they blew yeah. it all. Exactly. Star Citizen. <laughs> Star Citizen. It's not even out. It's uh, it's I, I, been I, I actually oh, I actually I'm convinced. Liked, I'm, I actually love I'm convinced that game is Star not going to Star exist. Uh, the game yeah. is out. You it does exist. Yes. That's all. But I I'm not convinced that they're ever going to finish it. I actually it, one day it's they're just going to have like version 0 0.87 something. <laughs> And that's going to be the final version that they ever work on. I really want them to finish it because it sounds really great, but I like dangerous catch ups to them. But again, we discussed that we shouldn't uh, talk about other studios in negative light, but okay, sometimes we uh, can't escape that. Anyway, we had another question to jump from. Uh... Wait, 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 wait. Uh, can I just uh, add one, one, one little story about thing that was requested? Because I yeah. really love it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, things that get requested. There was one specific request that we kept hearing uh, about Kingmaker. You see, we, uh, we, keep, we kept saying that it's a role-playing game, it's massive, uh, you can make all these choices, you can create your, all, uh, your own kingdom, you can build it, bring it to prosperity, make it good or evil, uh, you can uh, make alliances, you can do this and this and that. And people kept asking one specific question. People, people kept asking, okay, but can I be a leech? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and for Kingmaker, the answer was no. But guess what you can do in Wrath of the Righteous? Oh, you can be hey. a leech that has a skeletal champion wow. and his own ziggurat. And it's awesome. Yeah, you get your own Ziggurat in Wrath of the Righteous. I, I think the two... For me, the my two favorite uh, mythic paths that I won't play, but I really like what they get is uh, Lich and Azata. They have a lot of cool stuff, but I will never play them. Like, I really I want know. to play Swarm That Walks. Like, n right now, I just... Like, I think that's yeah, yeah, the that most that. fun. Yeah. Weird. Like, it would no, be the most weird. It is great. I think it's really it's interesting just, to just consume just, everything. Just, just, just consume everything. Just consume, 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 consume. <laughs> uh, anyway, I wanted to, from this question, jump maybe to the last one because it's already 11 p.m. But if you want, we can yes. sip it. We, do, we can do one more. We yeah. can do one more. Or, or two more if uh, no one minds. Uh, so. Wake up. Wake up somewhere. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, exp uh, the talk about expressive characters. I think uh, you could open it up a bit more for audience and uh, developers, because it was again from you. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 which one? Which one is this? Uh, expressive characters, ring a bell. Ah, mm. uh, yes, right. Okay. Uh, yeah. What's your favorite like f character archetype? Because like. Um... Cause, because mine, my personally, is is expressive characters. Uh, oh, yeah. Like the example I put is Ringabell from um, Bravely Default. He's a very loud, kind of obnoxious, kind of uh, you know, uh, very self confident and cocky character. But I love him, and I love all characters like him. You know, like Cusco from Emperor's New Groove. Uh, he's very bombastic. Like he kicks the door down. He knows he's the best. Um, yeah, and and I guess what are your your favorite character archetypes? You know, difficult question. Have to think. <laughs> no. uh, actually, I, I I can answer it really fast because uh, this archetype uh, I met in our previous game by finding Kingmaker. It's a depressed guy 
who talks about that. <laughs> oh. he, he's not actually depressed. It's just the the way of life. I think I don't know how to put Harry better, because he says that death is inevitable, and yeah, it's kind of is. And his position in life about that is yeah, fine. We will go. Mm. We will die anyway. What's the problem? Uh, I actually would never like to leave or spend ta- spend a lot of time with such person because yeah, I was such a person back. Mm. In the... Do you have any examples of that kind of character? I, I actually can't recall other examples of such character. Maybe Thai could help me here. Mm. Just okay. someone like Harim. Maybe Chat can help us. Uh, Any other characters like Harim? Our Max favorite Payne. dwarf. Dwarf, sorry. Max Payne? Mm. Yeah, I guess Max Payne is one of those where he's like, yeah, things suck, but you just kind of need to continue anyway. Yep. That might be the close one, yeah. I, I like Max, Max Payne, really. No, no not mm. from Rorschach. the Pathfinder. Oh. No, Rorschach is more like regular, I think, for me. No, yeah, R- Rorschach is like, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah I, I think they call I mean, the... Rorschach uh... is a literal doomsayer. Uh, spoiler, <laughs> spoiler, when he's not uh, doing superhero stuff, he literally walks around with a, the end is nice sign. Yeah, uh, he's yeah. kind of a crazy yeah. person. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I, I think I think they call it the positive nihilist, like the person who's like, nothing matters, so might as well have fun. Yeah, you know? I, I think that's a character archetype I really love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to think as well. I don't know. Yeah. So, what oh, about funny, you, Finally, uh, finally uh, you say positive nihilist. Uh, that's exactly what... Um, that's exactly what Ember is. She's mm. like the opposite of Harim uh, because she uh, is a character who went through um, who went through complete despair and hopelessness and emerged on the other side of it. Mm. It's like uh, gods will not help us. Nobody's helping us. So that's why we'll have to do miracles ourselves. I guess that's what <laughs> she says. Cute. Yeah. I just realized actually the kind of the characters that I like in general. Like, I think I really liked uh, Mulan from the Disney cartoon. That's uh, I really like that archetype. And in general, I like uh, the archetype of person who prevails against all odds, who can do stuff, uh, who can be just like yes. We have to do that. We have to be smart. We have to, I don't know, come up with some ideas how to resolve it. And I really loved uh, the Shepherd from Mass Effect 1 and 2 and almost till the end of Mass Effect 3. And eggs not mm. included. Uh, this is also was like especially kind of renegade Shepherd. I really like that. It was like, yeah, mm. let's do stuff. Yeah, there's something inspiring about a character that it just is. has such determination to exactly. just get things done, even when everything is against them. They're just like, huh. I don't care, I'm doing this. Actually, no, uh, you're talking about Shepard and another kind of, uh, another example of uh, that anti-hero we were talking about. Uh, you see, I played Mass Effect right after I finished playing Spec Ops The Line. <laughs> And for those of you who didn't play it, it's uh, it's it's a subversion of a military shooter. Uh, it starts like a regular military shooter. Ra ra, you are the great uh, soldier. You go and do heroic stuff. And the more heroic stuff you do, the more people die needlessly. The more everything is destroyed. Uh, the more you the, the more heroic stuff you do, the more you fail in that game, and you end up a complete wreck of a person you start like that um, bright eyed uh, cool soldier you end up a complete mess and after I finished that game uh, right after that I started playing uh, Mass Effect and uh, it it was kind of um, continuation of that playthrough because my shepherd um, my shepherd was a terrible person the shepherd I played was uh, a continuation of that character from Spec Ops The Line. My shepherd was uh, actually a fascist, a supporter of Terra Firma. Oh. 
an absolutely Ooh. insane doomsayer because this is what uh, you can play like that uh yep. you can play shepherd like a person who is uh the only sane person right mm -hmm. the only person who is uh, right about um, the stuff that's going on with the reapers or you can play shepherd and i really really like that idea uh it was uh, it was probably not a healthy headspace to <laughs> be in but it was a, a very fun headspace to be in a completely bonkers um person who just happens to be right shepherd mm -hmm. as a doomsayer uh a conspiracy theorist a completely tinfoil uh just as insane as people think she is who just happens to be right about the reapers <laughs> Is that your favorite character archetype? Though? Yeah, it looks like no, 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 absolutely no? not. It's just, uh, it just the kind of shepherd that I played. Yeah. Mm. So uh, what's your favorite it was really archetype? fun, though probably not healthy. Yeah. So what's your favorite? Well, what, uh, what is your favorite, favorite character archetype? Uh, I already talked about it. Uh, well, it's not the kind of archetype I like to write. It's the kind of archetype I like to read about. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I am good enough writer to actually write a person like that because it's really hard to write uh, the chess master. Your Admiral Ooh. Thrawn, your yeah. uh, Miles for Corsigan, uh, your... Uh, what was the name of the guy in Chronicles of Ember? Uh, Cor Corvin. Corvin, your Corvin. Yeah. Yes, and it's in uh, your Kira, by the way. Kira from uh, Death Note. Mm -hmm. uh, all this... <laughs> All I could just as planned, just as planned. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really hard to write because, uh, uh, well, first of all, it's hard to write a smart person because you have to be smart. It's re really hard to write a genius person without being genius. <laughs> and uh, the risk to just, uh, like, help them. Because if you take uh, the actual... Mm -hmm. If you take actual, well, for example, Miles for Corsigan, sometimes uh, it really is a really, really uh, smart gambit he plays. And sometimes the author just handles him victory and loads him for being so smart when, in fact, it was just, uh, well, the author giving them the victory. But when it does work, I absolutely love it. And I think uh, Admiral Throne is so great because, uh, well, with him, the author did not drop the ball anywhere. He just is, I, I, I believe he is as smart as he seems to be. That's great. Yeah. Those are the characters that even when they're villains, like sometimes you like root for them. And, sure. and whenever they do reveal their plan or like their plan all comes together, you're like, it, it can be very mind-blowing. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Honestly, but you're right, uh, they're very difficult to do. I don't actually like when there are heroes and villains in the book. Mm -hmm. I am tired of stories that have, uh, that have good and bad guys. I love the stories that have, uh, well, different sides and different factions, and each faction has its truth and uh, they just happen to be against each other. And it's a rare thing. It's surprisingly rare. Uh, you're supposed to root for the good guys. Um, the last, uh, well, it, 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 actually just, it actually did hit that archetype. Um, uh, that book is called, uh, what's it called? What's it called? Um, Terra Ignota. Terra Ignota book series. It was a trilogy. It's supposed to have a conclusion. Uh, the fourth book, it's coming out this year. And I'm really hyped about it. Because mm. uh, it's a story of uh, Terra Ignota. The first book was called uh, To Like the Lightning. It's a story about uh, the future. Mm -hmm. And it starts like a, like a utopia. Like, it's supposed to be a utopia. It's supposed to be that perfect, perfect future where everything works. And then the author spends four books showing how in a utopia where everybody's right, 
where everybody's trying their best to do their best, where nobody is actually trying to undermine stuff, uh, it just is built so that it comes apart. And everybody's trying to save it, but it keeps coming apart. Book three, spoiler, spoiler, ends with uh, a huge civil war starting. And I really want to see how it all ends in the last book. And it has these chess masters. Uh, it has all these uh, gambit pile-ups where everybody has their own gambit that just uh, <laughs> clash with each other and uh, fail spectacularly for everybody. Really, uh, right now it's it's my absolute favorite book. That sounds a bit mm. like a version of some anime. <laughs> like uh, when everyone shows that they have a plan that will win uh, win uh, or the another person, but uh, this time everyone has a plan and it fails. Yeah. But it sounds really interesting, actually. You mentioned you, you like stories with multiple sides rather than good guy, bad guy. Do you like Warhammer? Um, uh, no, the, I, mm. I do not like Warhammer because uh, it does not, uh, you see, there's a story where uh, there are good guys and bad guys. Warhammer, I, okay, no good I guys. can either take it seriously or not take it seriously. If I take it seriously, it's absolute grimdark. It's just too grimdark for me to care about. Everybody is evil. I just yeah. don't care about any of these horrible, horrible, horrible people. It's Fair. just... Uh, I mean, it's literally the thing that Grim Dark was called uh, after. In the Grim the Dark really future, came... yeah. Yes. And if you don't take it seriously, well... I... I think I actually would like to see a Warhammer thing uh, where it is... Uh, I mean, it's an absolute world. And when I first uh, ran uh, into it, I I was positive that it's, it's a parody. Yeah, it's, it's a everything is so cartoonishly extreme. Like, yes, almost. it should be something like, uh, what was that uh, cartoon, uh, g g g the, bar the Barbarian? Gorgoth. The cartoon about the, bar Gorgoth, the yes. Barbarian. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, it's so over the top, it's so crazy, <laughs> and um, it's still not my uh, thing, uh, it's still too cynical and grimdark, but uh, if I ever had to, if I absolutely have to do a Warhammer game, I think what I would do is I would take uh, the rules of the game called Paranoia. Oh. You know that game? Yeah, I heard about mm. it. I don't think I do. So Paranoia is a tabletop RPG where uh, it's an absolute over-the-top parody of a completely dystopian future where, uh, well, the premise is um, the world is controlled by a computer. It's absolutely a um, totalitarian state. Um, in that state, uh, there are two things that are absolutely forgiven, uh, forbidden. First, the mutations. Second is a secret societies. And you play as a group of uh, cleaners who are supposed to root out the uh, secret societies and mutants. And everybody in the game is in some secret society and has some mutation. Mm. <laughs> it's where you are supposed to get killed for heresy uh, during the game creation, uh, during the character creation, once or twice. I would like a Warhammer take on that. Hmm. If I Warhammer, Warhammer, but paranoia. Yes, it would be Warhammer, but paranoia. Heresy! <laughs> exactly. But anyway. no, it's, it's not what I like. That's an interesting hop from favorite characters to yeah, well, discuss in our, yeah. our I don't know. I like seasons. I like hearing about you know what goes through y'all's brains. Well, I, I hope you enjoyed time with us. Oh yes, uh, I did. Yeah, it, it's, it's a bit late or, or already, and I think we should draw a line here. If everyone is fine with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Th yeah, thank you guys so much for having me on. This was thank this was enjoyable, fun, us. and insightful. It was so nice to have you. 
Thank of course, you. yeah. We love you. <laughs> <gasps> oh yeah, thank you. So regarding thank you so the much. results, the, so uh, we have to finish our voting and we have to kind of speak out loud the results as far as I understand. Yeah. So let's see who vote, who won, what will happen with our. Uh, so what happens? I don't see anything. Tell us what, which one, what. So, oh, I think we grant the peace to the spirit. Yes, I got it. So we decided to grant peace to the spirit. Commander offers up a prayer to Iomedaya. <laughs> uh, and the spirit uh, dissipates with a blissful smile. His battle is over. Inspired by that act of mercy, the party continues their journey. That's it. That's the end. That's Praise Emidai. Yeah, well, praise uh, her. Uh, no, not really. How did Paul hold her on streams? Jack? Joke? Jack? Jock? I don't know. Oh, just like... <laughs> Again, thank you everyone anyway, for yes, joining thank us. You, yes. Thank you, Jock. I, I, really, I really enjoyed your questions and asking them for you <laughs> most of the time. Sorry. Um, I hope you will join us someday uh, in our discussions, if you would like. I think we'll discuss later. And again, thank you everyone for joining us on the stream yes, have and a nice listening day. to us. Cheers. Bye. Bye.